Hello, this is Jim Kelsey, and the purpose of this video is to show you a custom Ewok village that I have created, which is the one on the left. If you're not familiar with the vintage 1983 Kenner version, then let me go around and show you what that looks like so you can compare the features yourself. So, Kenner came out with this playset in 1983 uh, as part of their Return of the Jedi uh, series of toys. And it was one of the larger playsets that Kenner created, and it has a lot of fun features with it. Uh, basically, it's three trees, and then suspended in the middle of the trees is this large tan-colored base. Each tree has some cool features with it. So the tree that we're looking at right now has a boulder that you can swing out at an enemy, maybe knock a scout walker down. And then it's got a hole that's cut all the way through, so a figure can hide from the enemy if need be. Uh, around the perimeter of it are three railings, and each railing has a different number of posts. So this is a three-post railing, uh, over here is a five-post railing, and then on this side is a four-post railing. Here on this tree we have an elevator, and uh, the elevator can crank up and down with this handle, so you can get your figure from the ground floor all the way up. In the center we have a drum that the Ewok can play, a barbecue pit, and then you can barbecue your favorite Star Wars figure, uh, as they were trying to do in the original movie. On this tree, there is a hole cut out, and the tree is hollow, so you stick a figure in there, and he will drop all the way down to the base. And then the final feature is the net that was uh, that the our heroes got caught in, thanks to Chewie grabbing the meat on the stick. And uh, so this net is threaded through this T cap here. That's what they call that. And about like a letter T, and it just sits on this uh, on this peg. And so and then it's threaded through the in between where the tree base is. And uh, if I pull the the net down, now you can see I can pull it up and capture our our heroes. So, um, why do I have two bases? Well, here's a little story behind it. I did not get this playset originally as a child. Uh, it was one of the few playsets that I did not own because it came out when I was in high school. So I was in 83, fall of 83, I was a sophomore in high school. So I was just really not into toys, though I really enjoyed Star Wars. So I picked this up as, a, as an adult, and I got a complete set, but it did not sit level. And when I was analyzing why, I discovered that something about the way this tree attached to the base uh, was was not sit, making it sit level. And no matter how much I tried, I could not get it to do so. So a friend of mine, another Star Wars collector, said, hey, there's a toy store up in Tacoma, and they've got one that's very incomplete, but uh, it's fairly inexpensive. I think it's 20 bucks. Uh, so I checked it out, sure enough. It only had two <laughs> two uh, pieces, had the drum that you see over here, and then it had the back railing where Leia is standing and her poncho outfit. But it sat level. And so I quickly traded out the two trees, and uh, now you notice that this one doesn't sit level. In fact, um, I don't know how that one sat level because it had several broken areas. Uh, the tab that mounted this tree on was broken, and I fixed that. And it was cracked along here, and I fixed that. And I just fixed it by welding the plastic together with a, a wood burner. So I figured, well, since this was already hacked, uh, or you know, had to be repaired, uh, I was going to hack into it. I don't like to... I would never do that with something that is good. Um, and... Uh, um, I, I restore, restored an antique car, Model T, and I, it's stock, 100% stock. And so I, I wanted to make sure that my original village was 100% stock. And so this became my hot rod version, I guess. Um, and it wasn't uncommon for uh, Kenner to duplicate playsets and make changes. They did that with their Hoth playset. Uh, the, Hoth, the original Hoth uses the same base as the Land of the Jawas from the Star Wars movie, and uh, has a, then they reissued it again called the Rebel Command Center. They did the same thing with Jabba the Hutt's Dungeon. 1983 version is gray, with, came with three figures, and 1984 version came with some very rare figures, and it's tan. So I thought, well, maybe they would update the Ewok Village and put some additional play features in. 
So what I decided to do was to make a playset, not a diorama. Uh, entirely different thing. So this is has design features that kids can play with. And hopefully make would, would make it a, a lot a lot of fun. In fact, I have a four-year-old and he really enjoys playing with this set. In fact, he enjoys both of them. So let me explain some of the features that I added to it. So first off, I added some pegs. Two pegs around each of the trees. And you'll see there's nothing there for them to stand on. And the, each of the figures has a hole in the bottom of their foot. Very smart idea. So that way they can stand and they don't fall over. And uh, all of the play sets have pegs around the perimeter of them, or throughout them. So that was the first thing I did. The second thing I did was I decided to make a little house for Wicket. And you'll see there's Wicket standing next to his little house. Now, that was originally a solid piece of plastic. Kenner did not carve the hole. Here is the original tree. And you'll see it's just like this brown wicker door. And I thought, well, why, why didn't they open that up? So then that's where I used some styrene rod to, uh, to lay the floor down. Little did I know that when I started cutting it out, that right, uh, where, right below where the boards are, um, was a support beam that went across the diameter of the uh, of the tree. So I couldn't cut as low as I wanted to. So that meant I had to cut higher into where the the upper portion of the tree is. And so that's why that's all notched out in comparison to what you would see over here. The Dremel tool makes a nice job. So I, I had to cut way up into this area because of that support beam. The next thing I did was I added a bridge. And uh, the bridge was a fun way to connect both pieces. I decided to use the T-cap as a connecting point and uh, use the T-cap on the other side. Now, it didn't come with a T-cap, and parts for this are kind of expensive to, to acquire. So this one here um, I made out of styrene plastic, and I actually had to create the other half of that there. Um, so the bridge itself is made from styrene rod, which I had happened to have left over from when I was building scratch building airplanes. And uh, then the, tr the posts there were actually Bachman tree posts. Uh, I had that when I was making a farm model years ago in the 1980s. So it's been sitting for 30 years, so I had to use some extra scrap plastic. And uh, I actually carved in with the wood burner, the wood grain into the wood there, give it a more realistic touch. The uh, next thing I did was I decided to make a tower for the glider. Now the glider was an accessory that came out in 1984. And again, I was trying to fill holes because here would have been a four post railing and the railings themselves can sell for as much as $16 a piece. So all these accessories add up eventually. So anyway, the, uh, the what I did with this tower was I created a ladder so they could get up from it and then a support base and then wrapped each one of these uh, support areas with the black twine, same that I did with the Ewok bridge over there. Now at the very top where the glider attaches, I put three little posts that go through the holes of the uh, glider wings there and uh, that way he can fully support himself. And then this is very easily removable. So I had to drill a hole in the back for the, for the final leg. But now, now we have a little tower for the, for the characters. The next thing I added was an Ewok jail. Now the Ewok jail came with the battle wagon, which came out in 1985, and it's a very rare toy and very expensive to acquire. And so in order to build this, I had to use photographs and drawings online to replicate it. So I'll show you some of the features with this. Um, these little hooks here are so that way you can have an Ewok carry it. So we'll uh, grab low gray and we'll take off his headdress. And uh, so you get someone like this and just fits on a shoulder as you get two Ewoks and they can cart it around just like they did with the original battle wagon. I decided to make a few changes though to this uh, and that was that the, from what I could tell with the drawings, this door actually folded down 
And so I decided to create a bar that goes across and lifts out. So you pop it up here and then it slips into that hole right there. And then the door simply opens up like so and then you can take out your figure. And of course it's got a little hook to attach to the same spot where the boulder is on the opposite side. Again, I didn't want to have to buy a boulder, so I had a lot of fun creating this jail. And uh, so this door are, just latches in, but it has a tendency to slip, unfortunately, with the this twine here. But I just didn't know any other way to figure that out. Uh, but it does have a catch there and a stop up top. And then this little peg goes right into that, to that square, so that way it doesn't flip up when you put it on the Ewok shoulders. So it just slips in and then pops into place and voila, now we can carry that around. As I mentioned, I had all these holes that I needed places to fill. And in this area, I had five holes that I needed to fill. And so the next thing that I did was I decided to use that boulder and create a boulder drop. And uh, the boulder has a hole that fits onto the Ewok catapult. And so what I did was I used Legos and created kind of a lever system underneath. So you'll see that this goes, springs up and down and it's got rubber bands that attach right there. And so all the guy needs to do is to put your boulder on top of that and then pull back and knock it and then your boulder falls right down to the table or attacks your enemy or so forth. So that was kind of a fun thing that my son really enjoys playing with that. My friend who recommended me purchase this, Jake Stevens, who's also a fellow, fellow teacher in the district, um, said, hey, why don't you do a C-3PO, you know, suspending him up. And that was a really easy thing to do. So instead of putting the drum in the middle, uh, what I did was I took a chair. Now, I happen to have the Hasbro version of C-3PO and uh, that has the bendable legs but seated here is the vintage version and so what i did was uh, same thing used the evergreen styrene tubes and uh, created a post and so it's got enough tension on it that luke can use the force and raise c3 up and spin him around again kenner kept things really simple and so that's what i tried to do as well and that's just a, a fun little feature on that um, I decided to add a ladder and the ladder works great with the, with the figures. They sit on there really nicely. The ladder is actually a He-Man ladder. Color matches pretty well. Um, and then the final feature, I think I've covered everything. Final feature. Oh, I should mention that I did, um, include the net and the elevator. I went and purchased those, uh, just because... Kenner would have included some carryover features along with their original ones. And so I felt like, well, they still needed a way to get up. Even though they have a ladder, the elevator works too. And the net, you need that. That was a key point in the movie. So using Dave from Toy Poloi's idea, I decided to electrify it. And so the first thing, I didn't have a fire pit. And so I'll move the Ewok out of place here so you can see. And... Oh, by the way, the uh, the seat there on C-3PO is glued on with silicon seal. I don't like to destroy things if they aren't already damaged. And so that was a non-invasive way. So if I decide I want to remove the chair, there's no harm done. All right, so now to the, uh, to the fire pit. So I put two pegs on that. And this was a pit that I actually purchased off of eBay that came with this little chair that... Uh, uh, Ramba's sitting on and so you can see three lights there that's just a regular orange LED just to give it an orange cast and then there's two flickering LEDs and then this covers where the net string goes in so we'll just put the that right back onto the post and that just presses in there and the the the, uh, the fire pit happened to come with a little chair there so I thought oh, that's cool because it's like wood a wood stump you can sit by the fire and so now I'm going to turn on the lights you can see how that works so the hole for the other barbecue stand is this little push button switch 
And uh, so when you look underneath, you'll see the wiring. It's powered by two AA batteries and a switch that I got from Evans Designs. Uh, and then underneath that plate, I created a, a plastic plate to cover up all the electronics where all the LEDs are wired together. That way, it's just it's all it's not exposed. You know the wires from each of the strings go through pretty nicely, but that mess of wires there just needed to be uh, just need to be covered. So we'll press the lights. You can look around. And now what I'm going to do is turn off the lights, and you can see it glow. So we'll back up just a bit. there we are there's our Ewok village at nighttime well I hope you've enjoyed this video it's a little long but it was a fun play set to do and uh, thank you to Jake Stevens and uh, thank you to David Toy Poloi for giving me some ideas